there is no debt ceiling. It doesn't exist. Uh, this is something that they won't tell you, but, like, it's true. Yeah, and most people aren't going to talk about it. Most people are just going to play the game, right? The game that they want you to play, and it's pretty brilliant, is they want you to take one of uh, multiple pre-manufactured sides in a debate about whether or not spending is too much, whether or not the debt ceiling is going to damage spending or crash the economy or throw us into default or something or something. But <laughs> the truth is, and, and this is the hard reality, that they've been doing this song and dance for fucking ever. Forever, yo. This isn't real. It's not real now. It wasn't real then. What it is, is it's a manufactured distraction. Um, and it's also a way for them to get us as a people to beg on our hands and knees, please, government, do not shrink. Do not go away. Do not lessen your empire. Don't abdicate any power. Don't you know, remove any bases, don't stop sending money to Ukraine, don't stop bloating the police budgets, don't stop anything, anything you're doing, don't stop doing that, because we need more money. You know, and instead of just spending within their means, instead of trying harder to be more responsible, the kind of responsible when Bloomberg tells us that we're supposed to start eating lentils and, you know, live more cheaply and, um, you know, <laughs> eat the bugs and nobody said this would be fun, right? That sort of elitist garbage. And by the way, from the same rag that I will not let people forget uh, is owned by the guy who said that you could Xerox a description of black and brown minorities and throw them against the wall. Um, and 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 that this was how you how you fight crime um because you know you go into those poor communities you go into those like poor black and brown communities that's where the weapons are that's where the drugs are just throw them against a wall you can xerox a description he said this to a uh one of those dinners where uh they charge an exorbitant amount for the plates because it's not really a dinner it's a giant money laundering opportunity for like funding certain politicians and efforts and shit like that uh without having to fill out a whole lot of paperwork um <laughs> you know because mike bloomberg is a fascist and he benefits directly from the fascist machine and he wants it to continue to be funded uh he's a great example this machine is going to keep ticking on and on and on. They're going to keep ratcheting up the numbers. They're going to keep ratcheting up the controls. They're going to keep Xeroxing descriptions and throwing you against the wall until we're all just, you know, considered extremists in one way or another connected to, like, Russia or some other form of terrorism or extremism, and they get to Rex 84 us all, right? Um, <laughs> you know, they'll keep on they're spending. They'll keep ratcheting it up and up and up. But they're also like the social safety net. And they will block you from, you know, helping your fellow man. They will bulldoze your tiny homes that you build for the homeless people. They will shut down your food drive that you set up for the homeless people and pour bleach on the food that's perfectly fine and throw it away. They will uh, find businesses for feeding the homeless people the food that would get thrown out but is still perfectly acceptable if they don't fill out a bunch of government paperwork and get fucking permission slips and give the government money. Um, they will continually do this. They will continually ratchet up the control. Uh, they will install anti-homeless architecture. They will make their lives miserable. They will continually drive down the lowest classes. And they will continually make it so that, like those people have nothing and no upward mobility, right? 
And they'll do all of this while also monopolizing healthcare and helping big pharma. Like, that's what this entire fucking pandemic was for. That's what this entire fucking pandemic was about. It was for and about enriching and empowering big pharma. That's what it was. And so your medic, your medical stuff is attached to the state as well. And we saw that because the doctors involved here were all profiteering. They were all involved. They were all right there to make huge amounts of money and uh, get huge amounts of, of power and profit and shit, right? Um, so, you know, they get to do that all while they're like regulators are either paid or directly just them by them, right? Like FDA is a revolving door of, of like pharma companies, like pharma people just fucking working there. That They're just working there. They're just working there. And they're also paying the money and they're also consolidating power. So welfare, like homeless assistance, uh, feeding the hungry, housing the, the, the houseless or the people who just need a place to be, medicine, all of it's connected to the state and they will punish you if you try to break their monopoly. That's how it is. That's how it will always fucking be. So the state has isolated uh, the, like... <laughs> <laughs> the state has isolated the motherfucking, uh, like, like support structure, safety net. They've done this so that they're the only game in town, and you will beg them on your hands and fucking knees to keep getting funded, keep getting money, keep stealing from me, keep keeping me in power, because otherwise you won't get what you need. It's sinister as fuck. They subsidize the crops to make them artificially cheap. And then they say, well, you need our price controls and our regulations. Otherwise, prices of eggs are going to spike again. Otherwise, prices of X, Y, and Z are going to spike again. Let us centrally manage this. Let us control this. Let us be fascists. Or you won't be able to afford food and you'll be just as fucked as those homeless people, we won't let you feed or house. There but for the grace of us go you. Fuck you. Peasant. They want you begging for that. So what they do is they play this game. They say, oh, Republicans are coming for your social security, and your Medicaid, and all this, and all that. And maybe they are. But you know who else is? Fucking all of them. And it's a Ponzi scheme doomed to failure at some point. Doomed to, like, stoppage at some point. It's going to stop. So, the structure that relies on new investors to pay back the old will eventually fail. And Social Security is a great example of that, right? The reason Ponzi schemes fail, the reason pyramid schemes fail, is because... They get new investors to pay back the old, and eventually you run out of new people's money, you run out of new people's cooperation, and the whole structure collapses. So you need to keep on incentivizing people, keep on getting new people in on the hustle, otherwise your shit crumbles. The dollar is a great example of that, because it's not money, it's a debt factory. Every unit of currency is at least one extra unit of debt. That debt goes somewhere. Some country is leveraging the U.S. Some country is plying the U.S. for international control, for maintaining foreign bases, for, you know, doing arms deals, for funding the Ukrainian military, for maintaining a presence in the Middle East to protect shipping routes for Chinese chips, for precious minerals and gemstones from Africa, for oil from basically anywhere, um, including Russia, even after they froze Russia's assets, until, of course, the West totally didn't blow up the Nord Stream pipeline, right? Um, all of this, 
is just exchanges for the units of debt which are created. Watch Mike Maloney's series on it if you haven't already. Um, but it's a debt factory because it's IOUs exchanged between accounts with nothing on them. That's the root of your money. That's the root of this country's evil, is that this country is fundamentally incapable and unwilling to get off debt, live within its own means. And even if it was doing that, it would only be doing so, this government, by stealing from the common person. Um, the difference is that it wouldn't be stealing from the common person in order to fund its debt machine. Um, because that's how it's been from the start. It's not like this is new. If you haven't already looked into this, if you're new to this channel or whatever, look into the Whiskey Rebellion sometime. It's fun. It's funny. And it'll grow your hair out. Um, the U.S. government owed money to France. And, um, you know, owed, owed money to its foreign partners. Because they lied about being independent. Uh, they lied about Independence Day. They lied about it. They said, that, oh, we're independent from Britain. That means we're independent in it. No, it fucking doesn't, you liars. They were liars. And so people started to notice that the money wasn't really worth shit and that they were doing better uh, trading directly in whiskey. So they would start trading in whiskey. They had alternative currency. And the U.S. government started to tax their fucking whiskey without representation and this whiskey uh was totally made by the common person the government had nothing to do with it and the government then stepped in and said well hey if you're going to use this as uh, like a registered uh, like an unregistered security basically then we're going to tax the shit out of you and then the the, the common person said go fuck yourself and they, like, you know, burn down the mayor's house. But who's counting? Especially since if they were counting, they would then see the 13,000 troops that George Washington came down um, on this fucking colony with. This fucking... And I'm still calling it a colony because, again, they weren't independent. They were just a colony of France at that point, right? Um, you know, this, this, little, this, little, this little fucking town, 13,000 people! To threaten them and say, you better get in line. To make an example of them, say, you'd better start giving us your money. This is a threat. And you know what they did? They didn't fight some valorious battle. They didn't fucking have Revolutionary War 2.0. They didn't do shit. They just, said, they just surrendered. When you have 13,000 fucking people threatening to kill you, it's understandable. I'm not calling them pussies for backing down their small town ass from 13,000 people. Okay? But let's just be absolutely clear that this anti-taxation, you know, Tea Party, blah, 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 free country, independent day, fucking, yeah. This country started out by threatening with death their own people if they didn't allow taxation. Taxation is always at the barrel of a gun. Taxation is always based on force. And this country started out doing that. And why? Because the sham currency was already a sham based on a sham government that wasn't really independent. And the people kind of realized the sham and said, hey, go fuck yourself. And they just said, go fuck yourself right back with 13 fucking thousand. Like, holy shit, Georgie. I thought you were here for independence and freedom and shit. But it's always been like that, and it will always be like that, right? So even if this country was totally independent and not leveraged to foreign countries, guess what? It would still be stealing from you. And, and the reason I'm bringing up all of this is because my, in Mike Maloney's series, which I, again, recommend you watch, Hidden Secrets of Money, uh, there's a video in it that talks about the whole Federal Reserve scam and how it requires at least one unit of debt to be created because for every unit that's exchanged between these two accounts with nothing in them, the IOUs are what get created and added to the money supply. And then these motherfuckers just say, those IOUs are real and can be exchanged. And then there's this massive bond market 
where everybody is trying to get invested in the health of the U.S. economy. That's why a bunch of banks failed recently. That's why FTX and blah, blah failed. That's why all these things are failing. Because the common person is not aware of how invested all these international actors, all these people are in maintaining this grift, in maintaining this scam. And it's a Ponzi scheme all the way down to the way the dollar is made. It's a Ponzi scheme all the way. Every step of the fucking way, it's a Ponzi scheme. And it requires more and more IOUs and more and more people on the debt plantation and more and more people invested in the international economy that leverages these motherfuckers and empowers the banksters and the old money people, like, of many races, not just one, before you fucking anti-Semites, like, act like I'm on your side. Um... You know, the Saudis, the fucking Chinese, the Russians up until not long ago, and still to some extent them, the Ukrainians who voted no along with the U.S. on a resolution to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't glorify Nazism, because the Nazis never really lost World War II, let's be clear. The U.S. helped them a lot, and then they survived afterwards because of the U.S., uh, all these efforts. I'll, you know, make really comprehensive content on that at some point. But, like, ultimately, you know, all these foreign powers, um, they all have leverage on the U.S. And all of these foreign powers collecting that debt, all of these, like, new people that have to be added to the debt farm in order to facilitate that, those people are the new investments at the bottom of the Ponzi scheme. Those people are serialized at birth with a birth certificate and a social security number, and they're added to the grift. They're added to the machine. And then eventually they get a fucking, like, you know, <laughs> a, a fucking DMV-approved driver's license, and that's just another serial number. And then they get the mark of the beast in the form of all this tech being built for biometrics, reading reading your, your handprint and your face print and all this other shit. So that you can participate in the economy. And that stuff, that stuff right there at the end, that's the reason everything is getting massively unstable right now. That's the reason the food supply is consistently being threatened. That's the reason that they need all this instability. That's the reason that their bond market uh, and, and all the banks which relied on it had to have their little crashy crash. Because the U.S. just finished its pilot program for CBDC. And because they know that if they can muscle this through, not only will they be able to track you and everything that you purchase and do and think and say, but they'll be able to uh, print whatever the fuck they want, however much they want, because if they can move us onto an entirely digital currency, they won't even need to worry about a physical money supply so that they won't have to worry about having to, like, you know, print a certain amount to compensate for the amount of numbers in the system. They can just go full hog in this bitch. Like, they've already got it with Fractional Reserve, the debt that Fractional Reserve relies on, the additional uh, money that they print with quantitative easing, the system feeding itself back into itself with compound fractional reserves, with people, you know, taking money from one bank with fractional reserves and putting it into another bank with fractional reserves, and it's a giant fucking spider web of corruption. It's a giant fucking spider web of fake money and zeros where there should be ones if it was honorable. It's a giant fucking spider web, and it needs debt to thrive. It needs debt to continue. Continue, and it will get debt to continue as much debt as it needs to continue every single fucking time and it will continue to crush the worker it will continue to build empire it will continue to wage war it will continue to enslave people it will continue all of this because it has to because that's the way the system is set up and either they keep doing that or the whole scam fucking collapses Either they continue getting more investors, or the whole scam fucking collapses. So they keep getting more investors. And, in order to keep these investors on board, in order to keep these investors invested, they have to scare the fucking shit out of you! So they have to keep claiming that without all these programs, without them, without gun control, all of this stuff... You would be lost. Without them at the helm, there would be another pandemic, even though that whole thing was, like, you know, made in a lab. 
Uh, even though their solutions, like masks, were repeatedly proven not to work. Even though their vaccines were massive for profit garbage. And even though the whole thing was engineered. They've lied you into every war. They lied you into this pandemic. They lied you out of it. And they still want to lie you back into it occasionally. Hashtag COVID is not over trending like every few months or so from the people who are like that wrestling guy in the WWE. Like, it's still real to me, damn it. Like, that's where we are. We're with these scammers who are continually scamming us and scaring the shit out of us if we don't comply. So they continually get you thinking that unless you, you let the debt scam continue, unless you let them raise the debt ceiling, they will be completely fucked and so will you with them. The economy will collapse. There will be bedlam in the streets. Grandma's going to not get her fucking drugs that were already overpriced because of regulatory capture. All of this fucking garbage. And they're going to keep doing this over and over because they can get away with it. And because that's how they keep you invested in the fucking scam. And they're going to do this as many times as they fucking want. They're going to keep on doing this because eventually they're going to admit what I started this video by saying. They're going to say the debt limit, the debt ceiling isn't fucking real. Because they're going to just start printing whatever they fucking want to. Because they're going to have universal control. Because they kept us fighting each other long enough that they can get this universal control. That they can get their AI facial recognition super state. That they can muscle in their fascist dystopia. That they can keep all of their fucking power and expand it even further. That they can do all of this while cementing control at home so that people don't complain too much when this country starts to look like the third world. Because guess what? The rest of the world is stopping taking U.S. waste. The rest of the world is stopping, uh, you know, giving the U.S. oil. The rest of the world is going to shut us off if they don't play ball. So you've got to play ball. And if you don't play ball... Guess what? This place is going to be a new drilling zone. This place is going to be the new e-waste and normal waste landfill. They won't be able to just consistently ship it overseas. This place. This place. This place. Right? This place is going to start being exactly like the shithole countries Trump called the other places, right? This place. That's where we're headed. And we're going to be headed there anyway... Even if, like, the debt ceiling is abolished, even if CBDC blah blah isn't in enacted. Because eventually the world's gonna get sick of U.S. shit, and the U.S. will have to run their own corporate garbage here. They'll have to run their own corporate waste here. They'll have to run their own oil from here. They'll have to extract their minerals from here. They'll have to do everything here that they've been fucking up everywhere else to do. That's what the U.S. is protracting. That's what the U.S. is trying to prolong. That's what the U.S. is trying to string, uh, string us all along for. Keep us all on the scam for. Keep us all invested in the machine for. Because the further they can push that down the line, the closer they can get to escape pod status with working rockets. So pardon me if I just think the debt ceiling is a fucking scam too! Because I feel like it is. I feel like this is where we're headed. I feel like we're heading toward a trash-filled, toxic dystopia that will make Ohio look regular. It's been a long day. I've been doing a lot of other work. I've been getting a lot of other things done. I needed to get a video out. The debt ceiling is being discussed. Everybody's being like, ooh, default, default, maybe we'll default. If that happened, fucking good! It's been happening way too much that the U.S. gets away with their garbage because they get to pretend that someday they're going to pay this all back. We promise. We promise we'll pay it all back. Now keep on paying us money, other countries. Keep on keeping the grift up. If you don't, the entire world's going to collapse and we're the bulwark of Western civilization, you hear? It's a fucking scam.
It's all a fucking scam, and it's all a big fucking club, and you're not fucking in it. And I just wanted to put out this video because I'm frustrated to shit of hearing the same song and dance goddamn over again! I heard all this shit a decade ago! I'm tired of it! And if you're tired of it too, like, share, and subscribe, and fucking smash the fucking state.